What's up guys, Sam Worker here and today I'm going to be showing you how I created this. Now yes, as you can see, those are giant dominoes falling down the street. And this video idea was originally just an idea I had for a possible test video that probably never be seen on YouTube. But we sent a Facebook and Twitter post out asking for suggestions for possible tutorials. And we got a lot of feedback asking for motion tracking tutorials and also just 3D Max tutorials in general. And since this particular video involves both motion tracking and a lot of 3D Max work, I thought it would be helpful to create a tutorial. So let's get started. So here are an After Effects, and as you can see, we have footage imported into our composition. And be sure to check the description because I included a download link for this footage and some of the other project files so you can follow along if you'd like. So we can scrub through the footage and we can see that we have Eric walking down the street. He comes upon what's soon to be a domino, walks over to it, pushes it over, and it causes them to all start falling down the street. So we need to render this out in an image sequence so we can open it up in 3D's Max in the viewports. And to do that, we'll go over to Composition, click Add to Render Queue, click Lossless, change the format to JPEG Sequence. Under Format Options, make sure the quality is set to maximum, which is 10. Click OK. Now uncheck Use Comp Frame Number, and that's mainly for if you if you're use, if you're in a composition with other shots. Now click OK. Navigate. Click here to navigate to where you want to render this out to, and click Render. So here we are now in Bijou, where we will be motion tracking the footage we just rendered into a sequence. So click Import Sequence. And now that I've navigated to my sequence, click the first frame and click open. And now the frame rate is 23.976 frames per second. And then click OK. And now Bijou has sort of a glitch where it just changes the frame rate back to 25, even though we just said 23.976. So go to setup, edit sequence, and just change it back. Click OK, and now it will stay. So Bijou is very good with motion tracking, and more times than not, it will be able to recognize if a if some if an object's moving the scene that it shouldn't track. So normally you'd want to mask Eric out or mask an object out that's moving in the scene, but Eric's not taking up enough of the frame to really cause any difficulties and I trust that Bougie will be able to work around him. So we're just gonna skip the masking and we're going to go to track features. So click track features. And we're gonna track all frames and click start. And now that that's done click camera solve. Make sure all frames is checked and click start. All right, so the camera solve is now complete and we can scrub through and we can see that Bougie was able to work around Eric because it's got a very solid track on the footage. And now all that's left to do is to define our X, Y, and Z coordinates. So to do that, we need to go to 3D tasks, click add edit scene geometry and we now need to select two points on the X axis. So I'll select this point and press control and select this point. Now click add coordinate from hint, type is X axis and then click connect to selected. Now I need to do the same for the Y axis. So we can choose these points right back here. Add coordinate from hint, Y axis and connect and the z-axis. So choose these points right here. Click add coordinate from hint, z-axis, and connect. And now we also want an origin, so we'll make that right in front of him when he's pushing the domino over. So this point. Click it. And we only need one for the origin, so add coordinate from hint, change it to origin, and click connect. Now we can exit out of that and now I want to choose a couple points that will actually save out in our script data so that and we'll be able to see it in 3D's Max. So you don't want to go overboard with this, but you want to choose a couple points specifically on the street because that's where that's what we're going to be working with. The dominoes on the street. So press control and just click a couple down the street. You're going to want to use the ones that are actually useful uh, in positioning the dominoes. So we want to stick with the middle of the street because that's where the domino is going to be placed. And 
choose couple right next to them. Go back a little bit further back just to make sure. This is, these are also really going to help when positioning our ground plane. So that looks good. Now, now we have them selected. Right click on one of them that you selected and click flag for export. And now go over to export, export camera solve, and we're going to change the export type to 3D's Max. Click export flag tracks only. Uncheck this, change this to zero, change scale scene by to 100. Click browse and navigate to where you want to save it out to, and then click save. So here we are now in 3ds Max where all the modeling and animation of the dominoes will take place. And as you can see I already have 8 dominoes pre-modeled just to save you the trouble of having to watch me model all 8 of them. But I will show you how to model one so you can get going on modeling your own. So before we do anything I'll just go over one tip for moving around and navigating through 3ds Max. If you want to rotate around your world like this, you hold down Alt and you also press the middle scroll button on your mouse and then freely move your mouse around you can rotate around the world all right so first thing first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our renderer to mental ray so go to rendering go to render setup scroll down assign renderer and change it to mental ray and then also scroll up and while we're here change the output size to HD 1920 by 1080. All right, so before we get modeling, here I have a article, a Wikipedia article open on about dominoes, and we can scroll down and we can see here are all the dominoes that are in a set, and you can use these as reference, which is what I did to be able to create more variety in your dominoes. That's why I have eight, and it will make the video a lot better than just having one domino fall after the same domino after the same domino. So also we can scroll up and under construction you can see that they're made of ceramic so that will help when choosing materials so minimize that and now first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a box just drag out and drag up all right so now we're going to create our materials for this box so go to rendering material editor compact material editor and Click an empty material, click standard, and here is Autodesk Ceramic. Now we're going to change the type to ceramic. We're going to change this to black, right underneath, completely black. And then you can drag and then drag this into another empty slot and change this to a whiter material, a white material. Now drag the black onto the box and you're going to want to make sure you save this box for later on when we're animating. So press shift and just move it into another position. Copy. Okay. And then you can hide it. But I already, I already, and then you can right click on it and select hide selection. But I already have my original box for making these dominoes mm -hmm. hidden. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our online article and we can go back into the Wikipedia article and we can see that these dominoes have rounded edges and they also have an indentation in the center that's the same color as as the dots so we'll minimize this and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the rounded edges so right click on your box select convert to editable poly now click the edge selection and now we're going to use your viewports to help with this because it can be because it can get pretty difficult but select an edge and then press loop and you're going to do this for every single for all the edges on the box so press control and select the next and then press loop control loop all right so now that that's done i'm going to change this viewport back to front and now we have that done we're going to scroll down to chomfer click the little box for the settings and I have it set to one and you can see what it does is it adds two lines and basically what it does is it spreads them apart and then when you increase the amount of segments say 15 
it gives more detail and it makes the edges round. So that looks good, so we'll press OK. And now that we have that done, it is time to create, actually undo that. So now what we're going to do, so now, so now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down under chomper and we're going to click the little settings box and put this at about 0.6. That looks good. And as you increase the segments, it puts more detail into creating, it puts more detail into the rounded edges. So here are the settings that I have decided to use and then press OK. So now we can click away from this and you can see that there are rounded edges onto the domino now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create the middle indentation horizontal line that's in the domino. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cylinder. Just drag out and drag up and we're going to want to make the radius a lot smaller, about 1.5. And make sure you have angle snaps on. And this helps with rotating. It rotates in increments of 5 so it's a lot easier to rotate to 90 degrees. And what we're going to do is we are going to reposition this so that it's clipping the cylinder just like that and then we're also going to try our best to get it in the center of the box or domino that looks good so now what we're going to do is we are going to That looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select the box, go under compound objects, select bowline, pick operation B, and select the cylinder. And if you look closely, you can see that we have successfully cut that cylinder out of the box. But now we want to make this now we want to make this part white. So what we're going to do is we are going to right click again on the box, like convert to editable poly, and then when you select the polygon selection, it's already selected. So we can go to rendering material editor and we can select the white and a plot. Rename this. Oops. Okay. So now we need to do that same technique to create the dots. So I'm just going to create one dot to show you how that's done. So we're going to create a sphere. Again, play around with the play around with this. You can do it multiple times to get it the way you like. And also a good a good thing to do if you're creating multiple dominoes like this is to go ahead and use that same technique of pressing shift to clone it and move it out of the way just so you have it for the next one. So you can make, so I can make this domino with the two dots and then basically I'd already have this done with the rounded edges and the indentation to create the next one and just keep, always keep a uh, duplicate off to the side so that you can move on to the next one without having to make a domino for every single one and you'll have an exact replica of the domino with just different dots. So going to make this circle clip the domino just like the cylinder did and you can reposition it to get it in the middle and what we're basically going to do is just the exact same thing, select the box, compound objects, bowline, pick operation B, Click the sphere and look, it already, and then there you go. You've created the dot and it's already white because we've already applied the white material to the indentation. So that's the basics of creating the model and now we're going to move on to animation. So now that all the modeling's done, it's time to move on to animation and for the simulation of all the dominoes tipping over, we're gonna be using a third party plugin for 3ds Max called Rayfire and it's a uh, physics plugin. So before we animate 
these dominoes tipping over and use the simulation, we need to evenly space these out and they need to be a lot further apart. Now, right now we have eight dominoes. I'm gonna increase that to 10, so I'm just gonna duplicate the first two, just press shift and then I'm gonna move them back along the Y axis. And now I'm gonna unhide the box I told you guys to save when creating the first domino. I'm gonna take the Y position of the first domino and paste it into that box. And now I can move this behind on the X axis. And now I'm going to evenly space this out by making an array. So I'm gonna to click Tools, Array, and make sure Instance, and the count is 10 dominoes, well 10 count. And I have the incremental already set to 65 on the Y axis. And we can preview that. and. That seemed to work well. I can you can low uh, when you lower it, you can see how they get closer together and further apart. So around 60, 65 should be good. So click OK, and now what we're going to do is we're going to copy these dominoes or copy the position of the boxes into the dominoes so that they're all evenly spaced out. So copy, Control C and then paste the y-axis into here. And now I'm gonna do this for all the dominoes so they can be evenly spaced out for simulation. All right, so now that's done, we're going to select all these boxes and we can hide them. Object properties, hide, okay. And now we have all the dominoes evenly spaced. So now we need to create a plane. This will act as our ground plane or otherwise known as the street. So we're just gonna quickly create that. And I have open our footage here and I'm gonna scrub to, through to frame 218. And you can see this is really the prime spot of when Eric starts to push it over, 218 to 223. So when you import your motion tracking data, it'll make the length of the sequence the length of the actual motion tracking data but since we're doing the simulation first I'm going to need to manually do that so click the time configuration button and then the length is 429 frames and okay and that's how many frames are in the sequence so now from the frame 218 to frame 223 we need to create an object that will act as Eric's hands tipping over the first domino to start the reaction process. So we're just gonna simply create a box about that big. And we'll move this over and we're just gonna put it right next to the domino. And then move it upward. When Eric's, press, uh, when Eric's pushing this domino over, it's about a little bit above halfway. All right, that looks good. So now we're going to press auto key, set a key down, and then move over to frame 223. And I'm just simply gonna animate this over like so. So now we can play back and we can see that it simply just moves forward. All right, so now we have that animated. It's time to move on to Rayfire, where we will define our objects in our scene for the simulation. So go over to Rayfire and we're going to open up the Rayfire floater. So here's Rayfire and you can see I've already set up my frame, my frame timing. Uh, it starts, the simulation will start at frame 218. That's right when the box starts to animate and the simulation is going to end at frame 429. You're going to want to make sure you set that up. And then sub steps that will originally be set to 5, you're going to want to change that to 1 for this particular sequence. And then objects we're going to want to make we're going to want to set all the dominoes to to be sleeping objects so sleeping objects are only going to react if they are hit by another object and those objects will be the plane and the box and those are going to be static objects meaning that they aren't going to be affected by the simulation. So any animation will remain the same that we applied to it. So now 
you can see I've already kind of set some of this up. Um, I've changed this material to concrete. That's the ground and just the box. And down here for the dominoes, I changed it to light metal and I, I turned down the density and also the friction because when these are tipping over, you don't want there to be a lot of friction between these two because originally dominoes are glossy and have a lot less friction than say concrete would. So it makes it easier for them to tip over. And if you have high friction, they can get stuck and they won't all tip over. So that looks good. So now we can go over to the physics tab and make sure everything's set here. And then we press simulate. So the simulation is now complete and we can scrub through and we can see that the dominoes are all tip over just like in real life. And the key to this was really to make sure that you set their friction between the dominoes to be really low so they don't stop each other from falling over. And now this is complete, it's time to move into motion, the motion tracking data. So we're going to exit out of this and we're going to select this box and say object properties. Uh, renderable and hide. Just get rid of it. And we're also going to select all the dominoes and we're going to grab the select and link tool and link them to the plane. And this is just like parenting and After Effects. And it'll allow all the dominoes to, it'll link all the dominoes up to the plane so they fall along with the plane. So we also want to add a plane material. So we're going to the material editor and we're also going to go to the render setup and we're going to quickly revert back to scan line just to get a material. So grab an empty slot, standard mat, uh, mat shadow and I'm going to change it back to mental ray, exit out of that and now just drag and drop this onto the plane. All right, and now we can exit out of that and navigate to your motion tracking footage or your motion tracking script and here it is so I'm just going to drag this out and you can see that we get an error so there's an easy fix for this all you have to do is open up notepad and just drag and drop the script in there and it's these lines of code right here caused the problem so delete them file save and now you can drag it in and it shouldn't cause a problem so we can move this off to the side now and we can now see the camera data and everything's in there. So one more thing we need to do is set up our sequence to be in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to environment, use map, click none, standard bitmap. Navigate to the footage, select the first in the sequence, make sure sequence is selected, open, okay, and Go to views, viewport background, viewport background, use and display. And one more thing that happens when you do this is it chops off a little bit of the sequence or the frame. So we're simply going to right click on perspective and say show safe frames. All right, and now we can mess with the motion tracking data that we have that all set up now. So we're going to select all the motion tracking data and we are going to press OK. Angle snaps is still on so it's going to be easier to rotate and we're simply just going to rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to rotate it back around. All right, so now we are going to right click on perspective and view from the camera. Now we're viewing from the camera and we are also going to now use this viewport for looking around at everything. So I'm going to set this up real fast. The grid's pretty annoying so press G to get rid of that and wireframe get you to smooth and highlights. And now we can select our motion tracking data again Oops, okay. And um, so select that, okay. And we're going to simply scale it up. And we're also going to turn off angle snaps. And we now need to just mess around with this to get the perspective right. And 
What really helps is to have Notepad open because what we can do is we can quickly uh, make this plane see through. And we can go to about frame 219. We can also see these dominoes fall over early and they should, so we'll fix that in a couple seconds. And we can see that at frame 219, we need this little tick that we flagged for export because that's going to be the position of the first domino. So we're going to copy the coordinates and just paste them into a notepad document. So copy all these values and paste them into the notepad document. And then what we can do is we can copy and paste them back onto the plane. up with that one. Ah. Alright. So select the plane one more time and we're just going to paste that on there. And now we're going to rotate it back upwards and that moved it over too far on the Y axis so all we have to do is just we'll actually select the no, that should be fine. Select the Y axis to do that. And now we can select the plane again, say object properties, uncheck see through. And we're going to now fix this problem of them falling over too early. So we're going to select all the dominoes. And we're just going to grab all the keyframe data, make sure those are all selected. And we're going to simply drag it over and make sure that this is the first frame 219 is the first frame that it starts to tip over. Alright, that looks good. So, since this is an outside shot, I'm going to be using a daylight system. So head over to the systems, daylight, yes, drag it out, drag it up, uh, the day it was the 10th get location, we're in South Carolina, all right, North Carolina, program wins. Um, we can, we need to change this to mental ray sun and mental ray sky. All right, that's looking good. Uh, we can go under, okay, we now need to go under the environment and change Uh, to photographic exposure. Exposure was about 200. It was 200 actually, and the aperture was 9. Alright, and you can see for some reason uh, I must have moved the plane. That's alright. We can just simply rotate this to be in line. We can scoot that up. <coughs> Alright. And now we also, the shadow is casted, and it's like right above him, casting his shadow down this way. So we just need to quickly change the position of the sun to be about like that. And that should be good. And a little bit over that way. Okay. And now we're just going to do a quick test render. So render. We definitely need to move the dominoes further back. He looks like he's like basically pushing over something that's not even there. We now should work on reflections. So we're going to create a sphere. And we're going to extend it over our scene. All right. Uh, we'll move it over just a little bit this way. I'll give it some more segments as well in the modify, about 100. And we're going to add a modifier to it, and it's going to be a normal. And then we have a picture. It's a 3D panorama with the with an app called Photosynth. It's an amazing free app. You guys should definitely check it out. And it did create a little bit of uh, mess ups, and it does have some uh, chopping off at the top and bottom, or the top and bottom of the frame. But it looks great. And what we're going to do is map this to the inside of the sphere. But before we do that, we're going to clean it up in Photoshop, just some of those errors. So I'm dragging the picture now into Photoshop. 
where we'll clean it up just a little bit. And one thing Photosynth does is puts these black bars on the bottom and top of the picture. So we have the clone stamp tool selected and you can change your brush size and hardness here. So press Alt somewhere on the footage. Press Alt and click somewhere near the, click somewhere on the asphalt and start painting it out. All right, and now we'll do the top. Oops. Okay. All right, very simple fix. Now, also, if you zoom in here, you can see that there there are a few mess ups, but it won't affect the. The reflections too much but we can go ahead and fix them so right. so that cleaned it up just a little bit and we can zoom back out that's looking good so we'll save this back out and go back into 3ds max so we're back in 3ds Max, and we can take that image we just saved out from Photoshop and drag it into the material editor in an empty slot. And then we can drag that material onto the sphere. And now we can see that the material is on there, but it's uh, reversed. So we need to change the tiling to negative one. And that fixed that problem. Now we can rotate the sphere around and give it the correct position of the actual environment. So it's looking good. Now we need to select the sphere, object properties, and we need to turn off receive shadows, cast shadows, and also turn off visible to camera. Okay. And we also need to select the plane, object properties, and make it not visible to reflections. Okay. And now we can do a quick test render. And now what we need to do is we need to fix the reflections on the dominoes because those are pretty strong. So it also seems like this ceramic material causes some type of uh, noise on the actual dominoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this out and I'm just gonna create a standard material for the black and I'm just gonna custom make it. So I'm just gonna make it right under black, right under completely black and I turn up the specularity, not too high and the glossiness to about right there. And then under maps, I'm going to add a reflection map and I'm only going to make this about two and I'm going to add ray trace. Now you can see that the reflections are a lot less harsh than they were with the ceramic material. So that's looking good. Now, one last thing that will make this look a lot better in the reflections is I'm going to select the material for the reflections and I'm going to just uh, blur it out so that now the objects will reflect a blurred image of that. Now it is time to render and I'm going to be rendering this out in three separate render passes which I did a tutorial about on this channel that you're watching this video on and basically what we're going to do is render it out in three passes which is the original shadows and the ambient occlusion and then we can composite them in After Effects. So if you don't know how to do that already, go watch that tutorial and we will continue on with this tutorial in After Effects with all those sequences. So all the renders are done, we're now back in After Effects, we will composite them all together. Now as you can see we have all the sequences in our project panel in After Effects and to do that just file, import, file and then navigate for the first one and then click it and make sure sequence is selected and then click OK and it'll show up in here and you're going to want to make sure you right click on it, interpret footage, main, and then make sure that the frame rate is set to your desired frame rate. In this case the original footage was 23.976 frames per second and then click OK and do that for all of them and we can scrub through and we can look at them and we can see that we have the domino pass. It's looking good and 
We can also see we rendered out our ambient occlusion. And this is for contact shadows. It will take the white away and just leave the black. And we also have our shadows. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the sequence, the original sequence, and put it in a new composition. And now we're going to take the original pass and drag it in. And as you can see, these start at frame 72. And that was just to save some time because the actual dominoes don't show until about frame 72. So I'm going to change the time frame to frames. And it's already set on frames, but to do that, just control click on it and you can get set to frame. So I'm going to change that to 72. Grab the ambient occlusion, press shift, and it'll help snap it in. And grab the shadows, do the same. And now we're going to select the ambient occlusion, change the mode, if you don't see that, toggle switches, change the mode to multiply. Now we can scrub through. We can see that we have the render. And the shadows are very harsh and we can also take a look at what the ambient occlusion was actually doing. That this adds contact shadows, and we can actually duplicate it to have more contact shadows. But you don't want it to be too intense, so we can bring that down just a little bit in opacity. And now what we're going to want to do is focus on the shadows. It's very dark, so of course, the beauty of creating render pass is that we can manipulate each one. So we can just bring the opacity down, and that's looking good. Now, we also need to make it... Uh, more blue as if it were actually being on the street like in the actual footage so select it I'm just going to select effect color correction down here at the bottom it's tint and I'm going to select the actual shadow of Eric and I'm going to change that to a more blue ish color and I'm going to also pick that and now I'm just going to lower the amount of tint you can see that we're getting a very realistic look now. So one other thing we can do is add blur to these shadows. So you can select it and effect, blur and sharpen, fast blur, repeat edge pixels and put it at about three. And now we're going to want to color correct our actual dominoes. Now they're looking pretty gray, so we're going to want to make them uh, darker. So we're just going to select it, effect, color correction, curves. Just darken it up. It's looking good, and we're also going to want to desaturate it because this footage was shot in DSLR with CineStyle, which is like a filter for, or not so much a filter, but a preset for DSLRs to give you a better image for grading, so it's grayer, but it saves a lot of the image detail. So we're going to select the original again, effect, color correction, tint again at the bottom, and just lower that to about 40 and that's looking good uh, one thing you can play around with is depth of field right here these dominoes are pretty close to the camera so you can select the original uh, add a lens blur on it and you can have it blurred out well, not that much probably about 17 and then as it comes or as the camera backs out it hits zero now there is a way to do that in 3ds max and it's called a z depth pass and what you do is actually bring the z depth pass in here and it's just like a normal render but you shut it off and then you choose the depth map layer as that now that could be a whole tutorial in itself so i may actually be making one of those so check back for it so so far the shot's looking great uh one thing you want to pay attention to is back at the beginning is eric's shadow it overlaps with it and that gives you a very fake result. Now what I did was actually in the original I masked around this. You can see I actually have the pro this project is what I used to create the original and I masked around it so that the shadows didn't overlap and I also added a solid to be like Eric's hand so I cast a shadow onto the domino to create a more realistic look. So those are some things to play around with. Pay attention to the detail of course and uh, be sure to download the project footage. I'd love to see what you guys create. Uh, maybe instead of dominoes, you can be like iPhones falling down. And also, if you notice any change in the audio quality in this tutorial, it's because I'm actually using a new microphone. It's an Audio-Technica AT2020. It's a great USB microphone. You should definitely check it out. I actually use it for ADR in our Action Driver video. But anyways, that wraps up the tutorial. So 
As always, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to hit us up on Facebook or Twitter or send me an email and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.